Hey guys, how's it going? So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to run a periodic density functional theory calculation using the Ripper module of TurboMole. So as I've already mentioned in my previous tutorials as well, Ripper is a module in TurboMole which is focused for periodic systems, although it can also perform calculations on the molecular systems as well. And that is the reason in my previous tutorials, I used only a molecular system to um, and perform DFT calculation using Ripper on those systems and that is because I wanted to give you guys a bit of a background before coming to a periodic calculation so that you already get uh, you know some amount of familiarity with the Ripper module and uh, as you all know a molecular system is much more easier uh, to calculate and also to understand the output files so that is why um, my previous tutorials were focused on molecular system but the good thing is that finally you now get to see how to perform a periodic DUFT calculation using the Ripper module. Now every periodic calculation no matter which software you're using maybe it could be like WASP, it could be Quantum Espresso uh, that employ plane waves or it could be TurboMole that employs Gaussian basis functions but no matter which software you are using you always have to provide the software at least the atomic coordinates as well as the lattice information so even for a molecular dft calculation you need, you need to specify the atomic coordinates that we already know but um, for periodic calculations additionally you need to specify the lattice information that would be something like either the lattice parameters or the lattice vectors so in today's tutorial i'll be using the silicon diamond crystal structure as an example um, for a calculation and it is a very commonly studied semiconductor structure and uh, yeah so let's um, begin the tutorial so first of all um, I would also like to mention that I have created this handy little ripple tools web app so it can be accessed either at this link or you can head over to the turbo homepage and then go to documentation and then this would be the first link on the right in the external resources so yeah so coming back to the web app now this web app has a lot of features so here you can see all the features that there are so basically you can create input for band structure calculation you can get some convergence tips you can even convert a SIF file or postcard or even a quantum espresso input file to the Ripper format and then you have the DOS or the density of states plotting utility you can also see some examples over here then keywords uh, meanings and etc etc you know it's a feature packed app but what we will be using today is this materials project to ripper um, utility so what this does is it allows you to get the ripper you know input file parameters or the coordinates for a given material in the materials project database so essentially you start by searching um, the formula so since in today's tutorial we will be looking over or we will be using silicon so i will type in the formula that is the symbol of a silicon that is si and then either i can press enter or i can click somewhere outside this text box so i will just click here and now you see it will search the materials project database and you will see that it found 42 materials that have the formula silicon just silicon now as i mentioned i will be using the diamond crystal structure of uh, silicon so you can also google that so silicon diamond crystal structure looks something like this now i already know that uh, it is a stable phase of silicon so there you have this column that says is stable and then you can just search for true value so if i search for true on this web page by clicking on command plus f or control plus f then you see that there is just one material that is stable and that is of the phase uh, that is in a cubic phase and has the space group fd bar 3m and that is exactly the space group of the uh, diamond um, silicon cubic structure or the fcc lattice so yeah so the id is mp149 so now what we need to do is we need to select mp149 from this drop down menu so either you can search for it like this or you can just type in so here it is mp149 and i click on it so now um, i see that it shows me the primitive cell of this mp149 material 
and then it shows me the structure information. So I have the lattice parameters that is A, B, C, alpha, beta, gamma. So basically it's all the sides are of the same length and all the angles are 60 degrees. And then you also have the lattice vectors, then you also have the atomic coordinates, and then you see the structure visualized here. Now, just in case you're wondering what is a primitive cell, so basically um, you can have like two types of unit cells. So a unit cell is something that represents the uh, periodicity of the system. Like if, if you extend your unit cells, then you basically end up with the complete uh, pattern of your periodic system. Now, a primitive cell is actually the smallest possible unit cell that will uh, give you the same uh, pattern as your complete uh, system. However, a conventional unit cell is not the smallest possible system. So a pr primitive unit cell would always contain just one lattice point, and then you will have some atoms corresponding to that particular lattice point. So in this case, we have two silicon atoms corresponding to this, you know, origin uh, or the corner lattice point, and their coordinates in Cartesian coordinates are here, and then in fractional coordinates, um, they are 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and then the other is at the origin. However, the conventional unit cell is actually what you might be more familiar with. So it actually has a cubic, uh, you know, um, shape. And uh, so therefore the angles are 90 degrees. And of course, it looks much more like this because uh, if I see like this, right, it looks very much like you see here at the Wikipedia. However, here they are also showing the repeated atoms, which are symmetrically equivalent to the already shown atoms here. So here we don't see the repeated or the um, equivalent atoms. So we only see the non-equivalent or the unique atoms here. But yeah, so conventional unit cells, of course, they contain more atoms. So the calculation would be slightly more computationally expensive. So usually if you're doing a bulk 3D calculation, then it is not recommended to use a conventional unit cell if you uh, don't want to use a lot of resources and um, yeah so primitive unit cell would save you computational time and resources and also there are some advantages to conventional unit cell as well maybe you wanted to create like a super cell surface or a slab in that case it is usually better to work with 90 degree angles and in that scenario you could also use a conventional unit cell but for us we will just use a primitive cell for this tutorial to save our computational time and resources that it perfectly captures the uh, complete uh, system. So yeah, so here is the interesting thing. So here you will see the quad file for the ripper. So basically um, these are the contents of the quad file, which have the coordinates of the silicon atom in Cartesian coordinates. And then you see some stuff here that is supposed to be added to your control file, which is the input file for TurboMole. And basically we are adding these cell parameters in angstroms, and those would be 3.849 approximately for all the three sides, and then 60 degrees approximately for all the uh, three angles. And the periodicity is three. Now this is something you should really uh, try to understand. So unlike you know, a plain wave basis code such as Quantum Espresso or WASP, where you always work with three dimensional periodic systems, there's no way to reduce the dimensionality. I mean, you might be say, uh, thinking, no, but I can perform like a 2D calculation. I can you perform a calculation for a, a, you know, nanowire or a surface there. So what's uh, the big deal? Why are you saying that uh, I cannot do a 2D calculation with WASP or Quantum Espresso? And that is because there, no matter what material you have, no matter it is 2D, 1D, or 0D even, you always have a supercell and uh, and you need to add some vacuum. I mean, you always have three dimensional periodic boundary conditions. And in order to get those 2D periodicity or like the 1D periodic condition, you need to have some sort of vacuum along your axes uh, to separate the periodic images from one another and in this way, you are basically like approximating a 2D material, but you are not really calculating or you are not really performing calculations using 2D periodicity. You are approximating them by adding some vacuum. So for a 3D calculation, you will find that software such as WASP and Quantum Espresso are quite fast, 
But then if you like do a calculation for a surface, you add some vacuum along the z-axis and you already see that it gets much slower. Then it gets even worse if you are doing a calculation for like a nanowire where you have to add vacuum in two uh, directions. And then for a zero dimensional molecule or a nano cluster, it really gets slow and computationally expensive because all that vacuum is not emptied. It's, it has a really big cost because you have a lot of plane waves being accommodated in that vacuum and therefore it adds to the computational cost. But turbomole on the other hand employs Gaussian localized basis functions and therefore it is able to handle any periodicity. You can have periodic zero, periodic two, periodic three, and uh, yeah, just uh, all these, but, and yeah, periodic one, if I missed it, but yeah, so you can have any arbitrary periodicity up to three dimensions and you save your computational resources if you are not, um, um, if you don't have a periodic direction. So 3D calculation would actually be the most expensive in turbo mode, while a 2D, 1D or 0D calculation would actually be cheaper compared to um, VASP or quantum espresso. So that is one of the biggest advantages of using a localized basis uh, density functional theory course such as TurboMole. Yeah, so that is also something that I wanted to cover. And yeah, then coming to the uh, next keyword that is the K points. So basically you specify the number of K points along each direction. So here we have a 3D system. So you specify uh, like uh, some NX, NY, and Z K points along each direction. If it is just one by one by one, then it's a gamma point calculation. But you can also make it like eight by eight by eight or whatever you want. So you can edit it and then just copy paste it in your control file. So all this uh, Ripper tools module or the web app uh, does is that it really um, increases your productivity by streamlining the process of creating the input files for the periodic density functional theory calculations using the Ripper module. So now enough of introduction. Now let's finally get started with the calculation. So coming over to my terminal. Now I assume that you already have TurboMole installed. And also I assume that you can really just type in the uh, name of the binaries and you can run it. So basically, I'm assuming that you have extended your path environment variable to also uh, point to these addresses of the uh, TurboMole binaries. For example, if you do something like which Ripper, then it should tell you the location of the Ripper module. And in my case, it works. In your case, if it doesn't work, then please check out my previous tutorials. They will be linked down below, or you can go to my channel to check them out. And also one more thing that I would like to note here is that all the input files or the material that I create in this tutorial will be also provided in the description down below. So make sure to check that out. So yeah, so um, so yeah, so I can call Ripper uh, from uh, wherever I want by just typing in Ripper as I already shown. Now let's create a directory called PBC calculations because I will be making a lot more uh, periodic boundary cal um, condition um, uh, calculations uh, tutorials. So I'll create this directory and then I will change into this directory. And now you can see that it is completely empty. So now let's just create a directory for silicon, change into silicon. And again, this is empty. So now we've in this tutorial, we will just be doing a energy calculation we'll just be doing an energy calculation. So we won't be calculating the band structure or the density of states, but that will be done in the next tutorial. So please uh, make sure to check this out. But yeah, for this tutorial, we just calculate the energy and get familiar with the Ripper output for a periodic DFT calculation. So let's create a directory called energy because this will just be the energy calculation change into that directory. And yeah, so now this directory is entry empty. So the first thing that we need is the um, quad file. So we'll create nano quad um, file and then I'll just go ahead and copy paste these contents from the um, web app Ripper tools, paste them here using control plus V, then press control plus O to save it, press enter and then um, press control plus X to exit. So now if I do LS, I'll see that I have this direct um, file quad file in my directory. And you can also check it out by doing cat quad. Okay, it seems all right. And now we'll use the define utility, which is an interactive script in TurboMole that allows you to create the control or the input file. So I'll press, uh, I'll type in define and press enter. If this doesn't work for you, then this means that you don't really have the um, uh, 
you know the uh, path where you will extend to these scripts so please um, check out either the turbo mole manual or you know uh, my previous tutorials to find out why or how to do it so yeah so when we launch define we can just pretty much press enter to skip the um, first two steps so i press enter two times now and then here in this uh, menu for the structure, I will type in A space God to um, provide my atomic coordinates. And then to confirm that was this done successfully or not, we can do DISC, display Cartesian. And uh, it, see, it says that it has read two uh, silicon atom coordinates. So that's good. So we can now press enter. And we can also then um, type in asterisk or star and then press enter to go to the next menu. Now it says, do you want to use internal coordinates? So we'll say no, because Ripper doesn't support that. And then we have to specify a basis set. Now, usually um, for periodic systems, you should specify basis sets some that are called like POB, TZ, VP. So the procedure is you say B, all POB, TZ, VP, and this will, and then when you press enter, uh, and then you do BL that will list the basis sets. You will see that this POB TZVP basis set was assigned to the silicon atom. So now you can again press enter. So unlike DEF2 TZVP, DEF2 uh, SVP or basis sets like that, the POB basis sets are meant for periodic boundary condition calculations. So now you can press enter and then go to the next menu by pressing, um, you know, typing in asterisk star and then enter. And this is where you will generate the initial guess for your molecular orbital. So you can type in EHT to use the extended Huckel theory guess. So EHT, enter. <coughs> and then, yes, I want the default parameters for the EHT guess. Y, enter. Molecular charge would be zero for our calculations. And then, yeah, I do accept these occupations. So, yes. And on the final menu, now this is important. So you need to go into the DFT menu. You type in DFT, press enter. Then you type in on, because currently it says that the DFT is not used. So we want to use DFT, so you say on. And now it says DFT is used. Then you can specify the functional by typing in func space PBE. So we'll be using the PBE, generalized and gradient approximation GGA functional. So func PBE, enter. So now you see that the functional is PBE. You can also increase the grid size to M5 for more accurate calculations. So grid M5. So, okay, so this is all done. Now we can go back to our previous menu by again pressing or typing in asterisk and pressing enter. And the next important thing that you need to do is to go into the RI menu for resolution of identity approximation. And then you see that it is saying that it is not being used currently, but we want to use it. After all, we are using the Ripper module, which stands for RI, so resolution of identity, and then PER stands for periodic, actually. So yeah, so here we will um, specify the basis set by typing in JBAS. So this would be the auxiliary basis set. So again, we will type in B all, and this time we'll use the universal basis, uh, auxiliary basis set, and this is, pretty much um, you can be uh, you can rest uh, sure that your cal you will you will not go wrong if you are using the universal basis set uh, auxiliary basis set as long as your basis sets are in, within the def2 family or pob family so yeah so be all universal press enter then asterisk to go back to the previous menu again asterisk enter to go back and now we are done with this defined utility so we can again press asterisk and hit enter to come out of this defined utility. Now, if you do ls, you will see now you have a few more files than just the chord file. So you have the aux basis that contains the auxiliary basis set, basis contains your basis set, and control would be the input file, and mos would contain the initial guess um, for your system. So let's check out the control file actually. So I will open it using nano. And here you have essentially, you know, the information about the basis set. Okay, we are using POB, TZVP. We are using a closed shell system. The maximum number of HCF iterations that would be performed would be 30. 
and uh, yeah, the, then we are performing DFT allocation with PB functional M5 grids. SCF convergence criterion would be seven. That is, uh, if the energy change is less than 10 to a minus seven atomic units between two consecutive cycles, then the calculation would be assumed to be converged. And then if we come down, yeah, okay, so that is basically it. But now it's the most important step. You come back to your web app, you just copy all of this. And you, so basically you select all, press control C and come back to the control file and anywhere here, let's say just right above TFT, you can just press control plus V to paste all of this uh, periodic information. Then you press control plus O to save it, hit enter, control X to exit. And now you're basically set to run your first periodic density function theory calculation using the Ripper module of Jabamol. So for this calculation, I will be using eight um, cores of my system. So let me just show you how do I, do I set that. So I do export to MP num threads equal to eight. And also I would like to mention that when I do which ripper, it says that it is using the ripper executable from the SMP directory. So SMP stands for, I guess, shared memory parallelization. So essentially it is going to be using the parallel version of ripper. In your case, if you don't see SMP or something like OMP or something like that here, then you should um, make sure that uh, or like see what is going wrong because that would mean that you're using the serial uh, version of Ripper. So you should always try to use the parallel version to really take advantage of your workstations or clusters. <clears throat> Sorry. So yeah, so let's do it. So now I will type in no HUP to run this in background, then Ripper, and then uh, I will pipe the output to the output file and then type in um, M percent and hit enter. So now if you do TOP top, so, ah, okay, so calculation has actually already finished, it seems. Ah, okay, it seems that I have an error or something or what. Okay, so um, we have managed to land into an error and it says that uh, there was an error in reading the basis set, so RD uh, basis set, so there was an error and the problem was that the basis set with nickname SIP OBT ZVP is not contained within the file aux basis and that means I somehow made a mistake when specifying the auxiliary basis. So, and I also didn't check in my control file actually, so yeah, indeed I made a mistake. So the JBAS or JBase or whatever you want to call it actually refers to the auxiliary basis set and it is POBTZVP which is wrong. As I mentioned, I wanted to use universal basis set but somehow I think I made a mistake somewhere. So we need to run define again to cor correct this uh, problem. So we'll run define. We'll press enter once, press enter twice. Again, we don't want to change the basis or anything. So we'll press enter. We don't want to change the occupation numbers or, you know, the initial guess. So again, I will press enter. Yeah, we can perhaps uh, delete all of that. Again, press enter. So here, so I will again go into the RI menu. Ah, okay. So it still says RI is not used for some reason. So first of all, I have to do on. So, okay, now it says RI is used. And then I will go to JBAS. Then I will do B all universal. So maybe I didn't uh, do it earlier, this RI on thingy. But anyway, so B all universal, B L. Okay, so now I see that the universal basis is being used. Press asterisk, hit enter, press um, asterisk again, hit enter, press asterisk again, hit enter. So, sorry for that mistake. I didn't want to confuse you, but, you know, it's better to learn um, along the way uh, what mistakes uh, can be made. So, again, let's check out our control file, actually. And now we see that, okay, the JBAS is correctly um, uh, set to universal. So, hopefully... Sorry for the digression, but hopefully the calculation should run fine now. So let's run this again using the same command. That would be no HUP for background. Um, execution ripper, pipe the output to output, M% hit enter. Okay, so now it is running and let's uh, go into top and see. So, okay, so now you see that uh, it is actually using eight cores as I had already specified. Um, 
using the export omp num threads command and uh, within a few seconds it should be done so already actually yeah so it's already done so now let's check out the output so this is the complete output let's see how much uh, how long it took so it took around 17 seconds on eight cores uh, of my computer so here if you go to the beginning of the output file you can already see that it takes um, eight uh, cores or threads and then here you see um, the cell parameters that were read by the Reaper module and don't uh, you know get confused that this don't doesn't match the um, you know 3.84 value that we provided but that was because this was in angstrom the input while the output file is showing it in atomic units or bore so yeah so that is why you see this difference and yeah then you see the direct space uh, cell vectors reciprocal space cell vectors then the fractional crystal coordinates so as we so this this way you can confirm so as i had shown you earlier that uh, you know in the primitive cell the si atom has the coordinates 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 so this also confirms that uh, when ripper took our cartesian coordinate input it converted it into fractional coordinates and it actually still is 0.25 so that is good to know then you have the basis set information which is um, not um, which i'm not going to cover in much detail in this tutorial you can check out my previous molecular dft tutorials for that and then you have this k point mesh so again so as i use eight by eight by eight grid so that resulted in a total of 512 k points but then you have the symmetry that the uh, value of the um, hamiltonian at the plus k point is the same as the minus k point so um, that is why you can reduce uh, the number of k points that you will be doing the calculations for by half so, you, so this was the actual number of k points that was used for the calculations and then you had the reciprocal lattice vector a and then the number of k points along this vector were eight similarly along the second lattice vector were also eight and so on and um, yeah then the we have the pbe functional being used and yeah so that is pretty much it um yeah and then you have this scf iterations which are pretty much like your molecular dft calculations and then finally um here you have some statistics about your system so now here is an important thing that you should be aware of now if you have ever run a periodic dft calculation for the silicon cubic crystal structure especially using a plane wave code and the pbe functional for the exchange correlation term then you know that it is commonly known that it underestimates the experimental band gap which is i don't remember but like more than one electron volt and it underestimates it significantly because uh, with plane wave basis dft codes you get a value of 0.61 electron volts now here actually we get a band gap of 0.048743 atomic units so first of all we will copy it and convert it into you know um, um, electron volts so copy it and come back to this uh, you know web app go to the universe unit conversion utility uh, we are in energy already specify the input to be au copy paste that number here and you see that we are getting a band gap of around 1.32 electron volts now what is up with that so actually the reason for that is that we, we are using a pob tzvp basis set which is actually not that diffuse because when you're using these gaussian basis sets for a periodic eft calculation you don't want them to be too diffuse otherwise you have convergence issues and you also take up a lot of computational resources but apparently for this particular atom i guess or system this pob tzvp basis set is too less diffuse so that is why it is really overestimating this band gap so what you can do and again this will depend on system to system for many systems pob tzvp or even the pob tzvp rev2 would perform remarkably it would be really good but for some systems such as this one not so good so we can change it to use a molecular basis set like dev2 tzvp dev2 svp and that should give us a better estimate so let's try that so again i will go into the define menu
um, yeah then i will hit enter enter and then yeah so i want to change the basis actually so i will uh, press y enter and then go b all def to svp or maybe tzvp would be even better because that would be really diffuse so be all def to tzvp but but please remember like if you are doing a calculation on like nacl mgo ionic solid then def to tzvp would be really hard to convert you will have to like get rid of the diffuse um, primitive gaussians from your basis set or something like that nasty stuff so in those cases pob tzvp ref2 might be better but anyways coming back so yeah press yes and then check if it was assigned bl yeah okay it works enter then we can skip on uh, this menu by uh, typing in asterisk star yeah we, i want to keep the universal basis set so i will still use k and then i will generate a new guess using eht for this basis set yes molecular charge zero default occupations yes delete all this yeah okay yeah yeah and then press asterisk and get out of this menu because everything else was already assigned previously and now if i run the calculation again and save it to let's say def2 tzvp output file now you will notice that it will take slightly longer actually so previous calculation was done in 17 seconds or so on eight cores but this time it will take slightly longer and you can also see that even the memory requirements are long are larger because previously it only took around 35 megabytes now it's asking for 197 megabytes because of the diffuse basis functions um that is the case so let's uh, keep on updating the output file and see how long it takes and yeah so it is taking a while actually and also in the meanwhile okay while this calculation completes what you can also do is you can check out the previous output file and you can just go ahead and copy this entire shit uh, sorry so you can just go ahead and copy this entire output file you know and come back to this web app and go to output parser paste the contents of the output file here press somewhere uh, click somewhere outside this box and then you see that it will parse all your energies show a nice plot of the energy convergence and also even pass the structural uh, information and this can be really good for debugging maybe you get some results that you don't expect but then you can pass the output and see that okay um, whatever I uh, you know uh, given the input is also coming in the output so it is consistent so uh, this consistency would help you debug if you there was perhaps an issue or not so yeah so this is a really nice utility that again i created so okay now the calculation is also complete now let's check out the output dev 2 s tzvp file so now you see it takes around one and a half minutes so slightly longer but yeah so now you see that the band gap is significantly reduced so now let's check out how much is this in electron volts go to unit conversion select atomic units paste in this value and you get a value of 0.79 electron volts which is actually quite close to 0.61 electron volts the additional difference that you are still getting could be due to the use of zero potentials in the plane wave basis codes or also you know related to somehow some more basis set but Essentially, this is um, how you run a periodic density functional theory calculation. And uh, in the next tutorial, I'll be showing how to plot the band structures, calculate and plot the band structures, and calculate and plot the density of states, etc. So stay tuned. And yeah, so thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.